the beginning the world started spinning, a disc that accreted from void. Creator's intentions produced more dimensions, each lest the last be destroyed. And out of affinity strode masculinity, clutching his Logos referral. But deep in his core looked a maiden, a whore, a temptress, a mother, a girl. Then Adam knew Eve, well he thought that he did, and that was original sin. But when Cain and Abel were sat at the table, his judgment seemed petty and thin. Playing the martyrs, a total non-starter, when round such routines she runs rings. What is this insanity? Everything's vanity. Woman is the measure of all things. The gods like to toy with Helen of Troy, whose visage launched thirty contingents. The judgment of Paris was heard on Solaris, albeit with many infringements. And Hera sat on Ida with Athena there beside her, when Aphrodite was vindicated, she rose. But the oath of Tyndareus exonerated Menelaus, thus launching the epoch of heroes. Well, then Hector fought Achilles and Odysseus in Ceres, but in the end they dragged his corpse around the walls, with old Agamemnon leading them again on and on till at last his fate befalls each who merits his portion of outrageous fortune, indignities, arrows and slings. It's all part of the plan, but he's only a man, and woman is the measure of all things. The bees knees Alcibiades in Plato's book Protagoras was shown to please old Socrates, whose electic still can stagger us. But all those Archimedes greedies looking to lever the earth Still need a fulcrum to rest it upon when all they have is its dearth. Nobody can know the Heraclitus flow who never steps into it twice. Everything slides and nothing abides and knowledge is never precise. Man only knows the ebbs and the flows to which his identity clings. For he's not the same man and it's not the same river and woman is the measure of all things. Then Aristotle went full throttle into full-blown academia. At a nearby clinic, Diogenes the Cynic diagnosed him with schizophrenia. But Alexander couldn't pander to a fear of his own dark shadow. After breaking his steed, he stood in great need of self-knowledge, a failure, a shadow. Then proceeding as taught, he did as he ought, according to Delphian principle. Dragged the old Sybil out by the nipple till she screamed, My son, you're invincible! With your banner unfurled, you may conquer the world! It ain't over till Pythias sings! That life is the school, love is the teacher, and woman is the measure of all things! That diamond geezer, Julius Caesar, had a scene with Cleopatra. In the palace he unsheathed his phallus while the eunuch Ganymedes tried to capture his fleet but was forced to retreat while Alexandria, still besieged, burned. After the battle of the Nile he tarried a while then returned to Rome, the place he called home to await his doom in the Senate at the Ides of March. Thus we recall the indispensable tenet when back to Egypt his mother Caesarian brings, it all becomes clear, I fear, that woman is the measure of all things. Jesus Christ had a tryst with Mary Magdalene. Those who knew this wandering Jew could never quite explain just how he was able to turn the table on all hypocritical sinners. But then at a loss he was nailed to a cross, this game of life sure has no winners. As thunderclouds loomed he adopted a spread eagle pose. And pondering death exhaled his last breath and arose. Full square the circle in this Merkel be the king of kings. But in the land of the blind, the deaf don't mind if woman is the measure of all things. It was a easy for Leonardo to bring his vast priest to fruition. Harder for Galileo to go square up against the Roman Inquisition. Truth falls are like two cannonballs straight from the top of the leaning tower of Pisa. And Michelangelo's David was wholly created in the shadow of the Mona Lisa. 
Logical proof is offensive to truth who can say how the heliocenter moves. And the anthropic principle is clearly invincible for he whom the calculus proves. That the puppeteer need never fear when jerking on his strings. Vitruvian man does what he can, but woman is the measure of all things. Immanuel Kant had a rant producing a moral monstrosity. With his golden rule, he started to drool, forgetting about reciprocity. In a season of reason, he promised perpetual peace. Where pleasure in measure to ethics can only increase. He continued like that from his conjurer's hat, a sequence of white rabbits to produce and from them to deduce based on his own clock-like habits. A constructed reality, lame like an amputee, where eternal springs of hope elope with cash for rope, but woman's not the measure of all things. Napoleon Bonaparte practiced the art of loving his wife, Josephine. His Nutella part on trois jours, je reviens, still thought to be somewhat obscene. He wrote, I have been endowed with a nature that is proud, but I still place you above me. In your alluring case, that of Gossamer and Lace, have you really ceased to love me? Then in despair, in search of an heir, he wed Marie Louise for her womb, who cried, he's a bit of a tyrant, but not when alone in his room. He's only a temporary emperor, but love gives him wings. Let him conquer the globe, but take off his robe, and woman is the measure of such things. Karl Marx made some remarks about dialectical materialism. For Lenin, well, that was capital, but the ultimate stage is imperialism, and despite such brains, some doubt remains concerning what to do about that. Stodjelats, Kakbuits, Kudabijats, Ktovinavat, and while the Mao effect demands respect for a single blooming flower, only the totally corrupt could ever dare to interrupt the prerogative of absolute power. Cutting closer to the bone to get blood out of a stone, the last drop that he rings. But it's all in vain and demonstrably insane because woman is the measure of all things. Albert Einstein started to shine, making E equals to MC squared. Putting theory into practice, his conjugals seemed tactless, but I doubt he really cared. That their mothers were sisters and grandfathers brothers, relativity should be kept in the family. Elsa, like Monroe, was a sapiosexual hoe, giving him brain, albeit somewhat clamorly, was objectively sexier than a troop of virgin nuns with anorexia. But I don't mean to make light of his depravity. To equate specific gravity with absolute momentum is quite right, and now Higgs has chosen the boson along with quarks and super strings. But why is there something rather than nothing? Because woman is the measure of all things. It's getting rather hard to be a global village bard amidst all of these overlapping framings. Trying from the start to perform a minor part within linguistic Wittgensteinian gamings and the nebulous assumption that per capita consumption has any kind of bearing on autonomy has impuberal misconduct as the gross domestic product of an ailing low attention span economy. And I don't like to mention the blank incomprehension that greets attempts to re-enchant the world. Just put it into storage while you try to pay the mortgage and never pause to think like we've been hurled to these bomb trades while unicorns and mermaids cleave to deeper affairs and shallow flings. It's all been said before, just another kind of war, and woman's all the measure of all things. Now, Assange rots in Belmarsh prison, pending extradition, with nobody to come go his bail. And many a sordid sex scenes relived by Jeffrey Epstein, who may or may not have killed himself in Dale. And whether Kletzer Thunberg's financed by Michael Bloomberg or Shoros himself appears beside the point, while the Oculus accusers of satanic sex abusers for purient rulers rarely disappoint. And the wounds of Muslim wives are being weaponized in an ongoing war against absurdity, bequeathing to posterity an heirloom of austerity downloaded from the web of post-modernity. Now the dog and bone along sits overgrown just like the one for whom the iPhone rings. It rings for me to the approximate degree that woman is the measure of all things.